Folks, welcome to the program. My name is David Letterman. Have you heard the new Marine Corps recruiting slogan? The Marines are looking for a few good men who understand Swiss banking regulations. I think... <laughs> Paul, can, can you tell I got my shoulder holster on tonight? Things jump it up there a little bit. Uh, you know, this is the time of year, and uh, just as New York City health officials have predicted, uh, that awful season is right here, and we're in the thick of it. Uh, people getting feverish, uh, shaking, they have chills, uh, every joint in their body is sore, and that's right, the NBC commissary is serving their eggnog again, oh. and it's a... Uh... hey <laughs> oh. <laughs> May have found a home on cable, huh, Paul? Hee-hee-hee-hee-hee. <laughs> Well, at the Republican governor's meeting in New Jersey yesterday, Richard Nixon, former President Richard Nixon, offered some advice to President Ronald Reagan, our current president, on how to handle the Iranian crisis. And uh, later that same day, uh, Telly Savalas told him how to handle his hair. So, uh, <laughs> what did I tell you, Kevin? Did I, did I tell you? Or, uh, 20 minutes ago, I said, we're shooting blanks, right? Let's rotate the picture again. I'll turn that damn thing on and make everybody sick to their stomachs again. Uh, on the program tonight, Jane Seymour is here, a lovely, lovely, talented woman. Uh, and... I don't know. It's uh, the hair. Well, there it is again. All right, that's enough. Please. Oh, please. I'm getting weak in the knees. Thank you very much. We did an entire show like that last night, and we got uh, calls from all over the country. A lot of people uh, claimed of uh, head headaches, dizziness and uh, nausea, but we get those every night. <laughs> Can you hear me or what? Uh, also on the program tonight, the man with the world's strongest teeth, Joe Ponder. <laughs> Joe Ponder, Paul. Joe Ponder is here. Uh, and also a very funny, uh, witty fellow. He has his own program now. Mr. Robert Klein is joining us this evening. So. We think it's a solid, fun-filled hour of comedy entertainment for you tonight. Here he is, folks. Hello to our good friend, Mr. Paul Schaefer. Oh, those things. You seem to be able to know how to get through there, exactly. right underneath the camera. Yeah. How you doing, Paul? Doing just fine. You know, night after night, uh, people always ask us, and I wonder to myself, do we, re do we have as much fun? Yeah as it looks like we have. And, and what is the answer? I was asking you. Oh! Do we, oh. Do we have as oh, much yeah, fun no. as... yeah, no, this is the most fun we have all day, don't you think? Yeah, certainly. You, you know what concerns me, though, Paul? We're, we're almost, we're two weeks away from the holiday season, yeah. and you and I really haven't had a chance to talk about how things are going. So let's just take a second here and, and visit for a minute. Okay, great. How are things going? Uh, fine with me. How are things with you? Pretty good. Great, okay. All right, do the get show. that out of the way. <laughs> what else are we doing? Do what? Top 10 list. Oh, this oh. is a good category tonight from the home office. <laughs> that, by the way, is the very definition of a smattering of applause. That little... Okay. Don't we have music that goes with this one? Okay, that's it. <laughs> this is... This, by the way, is in lieu of actual show material. This <laughs> Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, tonight, you know, we have Jane Seymour on, who has written this wonderful book entitled um, Jane Seymour's Guide to Romantic uh, Living. Is that it? Do we have a copy of it here? I'm sure we must. We couldn't really do the show without a copy of it right here. So, oh, oh excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, don't, don't seem to think we don't have the book. Oh, here it is right here. Thank you very much, Barbara Gaines. Here it is right here. Jane Seymour, a lovely woman, and she's written this book, uh, Guide to Romantic Living. See? There you go. So she'll be out later to talk about that. Now, that brings me to uh, introduction of tonight's category. Uh, tonight's category is Bob Rooney's Top Ten Rules for Romantic Living. There's Bob over there, one of our uh, studio technicians. Hi, Bob. <laughs> so... Tell me get this straight, 
straight then. Let me get this straight. Yeah. Bob Rooney, one of our studio technicians, <laughs> also has his own rules <laughs> for romantic living. Is that's that, right. Is that that's right? right. Yeah. I'd love to hear those. Try to try, try to get some exercise during the day, Paul. You're a little wound up. Um, here we go. Bob Rooney's top ten rules for romantic living. Number ten. Never tease a dog when he's eating. Number nine, when in doubt, wear socks. Number eight, wine plus beer, never fear. Beer plus wine, also fine. Press stone and gin, think again. <laughs> Number seven, when getting a tattoo, make sure the girl gave you her real name. Number six, keep a t-shirt in the car so you can get into a 7-Eleven. <laughs> Number five, first anniversary paper, fifth anniversary police scanner. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Number four, make sure your date's done with her beer before you use it as an ashtray. <laughs> Number three, start working on 60 minutes segment, five minutes before airtime. Oh, I'm sorry, that's one of Andy Rooney's rules. <laughs> oh, mistake. Okay, I'll take that out of there. Uh, number two. <laughs> number two, a man never stands so tall as when he sits down to do some show-off driving. And number one, Check mustache after eating Cheetos. Thank you very much. Uh, holidays, just a couple of weeks away, we have some uh, actual Christmas items found in actual retail outlets here in New York City. Paul, do you have music for this? Actual. These are actual. Wait a second. These are actual Christmas items found at your everyday retail. <laughs> All right. uh, number one, here we have a bag of something. Uh, oh, there, you can see it right there. American Army, Russian Army. <laughs> the bag of them right there. This is for kids who aren't asking for world peace this Christmas. <laughs> Number two, all actual items. Our staff members went out and shopped for these earlier today, Paul. Actual items. Actual items, that's right. Purchased today. That's right. Earlier today. Retail outlets in the tri-state area. Right. Here we have something called the Goofy Executive Case. <laughs> Uh, a lot of the new guys from GE brought these in. <laughs> let's, let's make a four-way light bulb. <laughs> oh. A four-way. Oh, nice. Good. <laughs> Good. Good way to start off a new relationship with a new employer. Oh, Very nice. Right. Good. Here's something. Uh, oh, this is the hopping bloody thumb. Let me show you how this works. <laughs> Here we go. The hopping bloody thumb. Yeah. There you go. It's it's the fun way to send a ransom note. Uh, where are we? Number um, four. Here we have something. It's. It's the crying baby doll. Crying baby doll. You can see it right there. There's a crying baby doll, all dressed up. You pull the pacifier out of the baby's mouth. I like to take this on long plane trips. It's also good for grenade practice. Um, here we have, oh God. Here, put, put that back in there. Stewardess, will somebody come and take this kid away? Here we have the, uh, the toy plane. <laughs> it's the toy plane, and as you can see, look, it's a People's Express toy plane right there. Right there, People's Express. This completes my collection of failing commuter airlines, by the way. 
It's uh, quite detailed. Actually, if you look in the windows, you can see people paying for warm soft drinks. Very nice. Uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, good. Oh, this is nice. This is the Finger Walking Santa. Right here. It comes in a box. Finger Walking Santa. See that? Yeah, let me show you how that works. There's Santa. And you get your little boots. Little boots. Okay. All right. Who uh, who wants who wants to see Rudolph? Okay. <laughs> oh, Jane. It's the finger walking uh, Santa. Well, we have a song of it about. Oh yeah, yeah, the finger walking Santa. Yeah. All right. Is. Finger walking Santa, you got me on the go. Finger walking Santa, you yeah. me nuts. Finger walking Santa. How are we doing on time now? One minute, because we've got a big show, and we're going to get to it, and we're not uh, going to waste any more time here. Uh, uh, this is a, if you can see it, a little uh, Christmas decoration, a sleigh loaded with dice. <laughs> it's the perfect way to say, sorry, kids, I lost the Christmas money in Las Vegas. Hee <laughs> hee, hee hee. Oh, a whippoorwill. Did you hear that, Paul? A whippoorwill. Yes. I don't want to do that one. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. That's okay. <laughs> Paul, why don't, you, why don't you leave the kid at a daycare center when you come to work? Uh, here we have something. This is Crawling Angel, and it's a, another lovely, beautiful baby. Look at that. It has the little baby bonnet and the little baby panties there and the cute little baby. Gee, I wonder how this thing works. It actually crawls. I wonder, wonder where they put the batteries for this thing. That would be interesting to find out where exactly. Oh, my God! <laughs> Well. How'd you like that acting, though, Paul? Yeah, which is good. Oh, my God! Hitting it full on is That's always the best. Right. Yeah. When you're not sure of the material. No, I was, I was sure. Let me just tidy up here, and then we'll get the show off. There we go. Okay, we're all set now? Ah, Robert Klein is here tonight. The man, Robert Klein is here, Jane Seymour, and uh, Joe Ponder, the man with the world's strongest teeth. Fascinating uh, gentleman. What's the name of the song, Paul? I keep asking, and I'm sorry, I can't remember it. Christmas Baby. Please Come Home, yeah. as recorded by Darlene Love. Great song. I think we should get her on the show maybe next all week right. and do it as this kind of an all-time year. sounds terrific. And, Thank uh, you. Good. Uh, our first guest tonight. <laughs> See, I don't know. What you very much. I don't know either. Our first guest tonight is the star of his very own television program on the USA Network entitled Robert Klein Time. It's always a pleasure to have him on our program. Say hello to Robert Klein, folks. <laughs> Nice to have you here. Hey, you're smoking a nice cigar. Thank there. you very much. You know, uh, since David Brenner started wearing sneakers, I can't tell the difference between you guys. <laughs> Is that right? It's not fair. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I've seen uh, I've seen your uh, television program. I think it's terrific. Thanks. You do a very nice job with it. Thanks. What what is tell the folks what it's about? What do you do? Um, well, it's a little bit of a talk show, a little bit of a variety show. It's called Basic Cable. Mm -hmm. Means we're in uh, 33 million homes most of whom are watching Dallas <laughs> and taping Miami Vice. So 33 million is a, is a lot of folks, isn't it? It's a lot of folks, yeah. but uh, because of uh, a lot of uh, reasons, including grafting and all that, a lot of people still don't have cable. But most people put up a little rabbit ears, they can get you, you know. What, what, what do you mean grafting? What does that refer to? Well, in New York, for example, there was a lot of palm oh, oh, smearing graft. to try to get... Yeah. yeah. Oh, not skin grafting. No, no, I thought it was like a... <laughs> no, because of skin grafting, there isn't much on my show. It wouldn't make much sense. No wonder you were confused. I thought it was experiments with fruit trees or something, no, is what I was thinking. No, 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 no. See, you're botanically oriented. No, no. David is a horticulturist. Many of you don't know that. Um, yeah, it's unusual. You know, it's uh, USA Network is three-part owned, uh, Time Life, uh, MCA Time Universal. Time Life owns part of it? Universal and, and Paramount. Hmm. Uh, 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 Universal and, yeah, and Paramount. And um, they have some unusual programming besides me. Uh, for example, they have those real estate courses, you know. You know yeah. those, those, those. Yeah. Now, I buy a $4 million apartment house with no cash, 
You know those? Yeah. Now, how do I do that? I go in, I say, give me this apartment house. They say, all right, do you have any collateral? No, you know. Now, you take the apartment house you don't own, yeah. and you buy a parking lot with it, you know. And wind up in the penitentiary. They also have a full half hour of the Helsinki formula hair uh, cream, you know, that kind of thing. Where the guy's family swears, it's growing like crazy, you know. It's, he's got this peach fuzz on his... Uh... So you run the gamut of all uh, entertainment well, possibilities. Well, they have some original... Uh, they have that uh, helicopter series, Airwolf. Mm, yeah, uh, they, that's uh, right. First play. Recently off the CBS. Sanchez of Bel Air. These are not reruns. They actually have uh, original run of these uh -huh. things. And uh, I don't know. It's, it, it's, it takes a while for people to know you're on. And there's a lot of those you're adjustable on, uh, bed the, commercials. The first run is on Friday night. Friday night at yeah. 9, and then they repeat it Monday at 10. Yeah. And uh, I think starting in February, they're going to move our time period. But I'll tell you, there isn't, it's only on once a week. Mm -hmm. There isn't a lot of pressure uh, on us, um, in, as there is in some of the, I mean, after all, some of these shows on a ABC were canceled immediately. Sure, you know? yeah. Um, we, we try to be thematic. Uh, I had a, an old uh, magician show. I had, my first show, I had three ventriloquists with their dummies. And then they made my dog talk, and then I had a dummy, and uh, we had, uh, I just edited one, a show, we had a, an old dentist jazz band. <laughs> really, they floss between tunes, and uh, they, of course, uh, wash their hands before they play. I try, you know, not to duplicate yeah. uh, what everyone else does. You have a lot of, I know you, the, the show's doing well because you have a lot of commercials, you have a lot of sponsors, I see them all the time. Yeah, well, I, they do have a, it's, it's very, it's fully sponsored. Uh, I saw the, it wasn't on our show, they had the adjustable bed commercial. Right. The, the old lady's finger gets stuck on the button, she becomes an L. You know, it goes over <laughs> if you don't watch it. But, do you know what happened to me this morning? The car from the show, limousine service, picked me up early because from I had to do show? something. From your show. Oh, is that right? Yeah. A car from our show picked yeah. you up? it was a Yugo. <laughs> <laughs> it was a chauffeur-driven Yugo. It was a yeah. <laughs> me to David's show, <laughs> Because uh, when I think of Yugoslavia, I think of cars yeah. immediately. <laughs> uh, I live about three miles from Sing Sing Prison. Yeah. And uh, there's two escaped convicts. Oh, I read about and that. And I was stopped by a roadblock, guys, with shotguns, just like in the movies. Oh, Mr. Klein, you can you see these guys? And the cops came to the house and said, keep your doors locked because they no bloodhounds are... Well, there were two murderers. They, the two murderers are still at large, but they caught the more dangerous one. His uh, crime was tearing the tag off his mattress. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they caught him at the Metro North Railroad Station littering, you know. And so he's... <laughs> that plus escape, this guy is... You can sleep easy tonight, then. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth. Uh, you know, here I am sitting in my office last night, and I hear, we repeat, two uh, <laughs> convicts... Like the old and, movie scenes. Exactly, yeah. and I have a BB gun. You know, what am I going to do? <laughs> You know, and like, all right, step back, you know, in a slingshot or something. <laughs> so the guys, as far as you know, are still at large? They are. Yeah, at well, the moment, they are. That's no good. That's no good. All right, what are we doing here? Oh, we're going to do a commercial, and then uh, Robert... Uh, Jane Seymour will be here later. You must have been uh, very excited about the uh, the Mets win in the series. Were you in the... Uh, is it true that you're in the uh, the Mets video? I, I am in the Mets video for about a second and yeah. a half going, Let's go, Mets, go! And I was at all four games of the yeah. series. I'm speaking for the baseball writers. And the honorarium was four tickets. You know, I mean, uh, eight tickets to the four games. Eight divided by two. That's eight. what you got for doing the video. Uh, no, had nothing to do with the video. Oh. Video, you got a handshake. Uh -huh. You got a copy of the video. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, if you taped it unlawfully. Uh, I saw a few of the people from the show. They had Mary Connolly. I saw, I could tell she was the only one who wasn't drunk. Oh, Mary. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was very exciting. In that sixth game, a woman pounded on my back. I thought I was going to go straight down and, you know, the uh, steps. It was interesting. Uh, naturally, the, the behavior was better at the end of the World Series. They did not rip up the field, largely because he had these, you know, South Korean riot policemen in complete <laughs> gear. What happens is the people that jump on the field are not the ones who sit in those box seats. You know, they're going, hello, Bill, how are you? Yeah. You know, they're from, <laughs> hey, these, these seats are neat. You know, those, it isn't a... It's the people who are suffering from alcoholic poisoning <laughs> who infiltrate around the sixth yeah. inning, and they just, you know, kept them up there with truncheons. You know, it was interesting. Uh, there wasn't a child to be seen. It was a wonderful World Series, but I thought baseball was a game. There were no kids, uh, oh, late, and everyone was uh, soused. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's nothing to suggest that you should drink 
on the right field wall is a nine-story cup of Budweiser <laughs> pointing right in your snout. This Bud's for you, sucker. You know. And it was four below zero. The first game was yeah. freezing. And they go, hey, beer here. Hey, load them up. Hey, beer. Comes in gallon cups, you know. Yeah. And people are storing six or seven <laughs> under their... The only, only thing they can store under their seats are urinals. <laughs> and by a third of an inning, there were some people, you know, headed for the men's room. It became like PS12 by the third <laughs> inning. You can't get in the place. And, uh, you know, you had to wait nine innings for a hot chocolate. And, uh, you know... I, 12 innings for a quiche. I mean, they didn't come around at all. <laughs> the quiche guy wasn't coming around. They weren't coming around at all. But, um, you know, I was thinking that uh, there's a mixed message there somewhere. You know, I'm, I like a beer now. And again, I know you. I like several. This bud's for me. I mean, I, pardon me. But I, for, I can't understand it. For example, um, there's people out of control. I mean, sportsmanship reigns, right. of course. Remember uh, Bill Buckner playing first base? He has a bad ankle. They go, bunk on him, he's a cripple! <laughs> and um, I've seen this Bruce Willis, uh, who is Moonlight. a television star, yeah. and he, he does, <coughs> good man, Bruce, he does a public service commercial. Some, someone offers you pop at a party. Just say no. You know, just say no. Two minutes later, I see his commercial he got $6 million for wine cooler, yeah, wine cooler, hot. <laughs> It's dry, it's wine cooler. I mean, I mean, it's a, certainly it's a quality, um, first rate uh, white wine. Take place. It's not a problem if I do this here with this thing, is it? Just move it like that. It's, it's, just, for, it's just for tours. Just for tours? Ugh. You ever bring any uh, stewardesses uh, up? I don't, I feel too well. What? Are you all right? tomorrow night on this program, uh, Paul Reiser will be here and Eddie Murphy. That'll be tomorrow night. Now, folks, you know, huh? What? I'm sorry. Oh, I get it. Tonight's show is not good enough for you people. <laughs> not worth the price of the ticket. Is that what you're saying? Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, flossing, brushing after meals and regular dental checkups have definitely paid off for our next guest. From Love Valley, North Carolina, please welcome the man with the strongest teeth in the world, Joe Ponder. Hi, Joe, how are you? Good to have you here. Where, where is Love Valley, North Carolina? Near a city that we would know? Uh, Statesville, between uh, North Wilkesburg and Statesville. Uh -huh. How big an area are you in down there? Well, it's a very small area. We have uh, wooden sidewalks and... Uh, oh, is that right? And dirt streets. Uh -huh. And what's the population of the uh, community you're in? About 90. 90? Yeah. <laughs> That's it? Just 90? Just 90. Yeah. Uh, we, how did you, how did you uh, get to be the man with the world's strongest teeth? And how can you prove that? Well, uh, I've lifted the strongest, uh, the heaviest, the pumpkin that I lifted last year weighed 606 pounds. You, lift, which, you, you lifted a 606 and, pound pumpkin with your teeth? In Circleville, Ohio, which... Uh, was a world record and uh, was the strongest deadlift ever made with a set of teeth. But uh, in 1973, I pulled a boxcar weighing 92,200 pounds, which was also at that time a world record, which is uh, another fellow from Belgium, John Masson, has uh -huh. pulled more weight here uh, on the boxcar. Yeah. But on the overall, with the uh, coming down the slide for life, we call it now, and uh, the I'm the only one that shoots a gun with his teeth. and. Uh, uh, breaks the center blocks with his teeth. Yeah. And Joe, do you, do you ever think maybe you have too much free time? <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah, maybe you ought to think about going back to work, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I retired in 1980. Now, now uh, what did you do before you retired? I drove a truck drove for 30 truck? years to Chicago. And uh, when in your life did you discover you liked uh, picking things up with your teeth? Well, I broke my neck in 1970. And, uh, but not, not related to picking things no, up? Huh? No. And uh, so... Uh, I always had good teeth, and so then I started hanging from the rafters with a bed sheet and then just kept doing different things. That kind of thing would probably frighten the kids, wouldn't it? See, 
see Dad up there from the rafters. But now, when you were recovering from your injury, that's how you started working with your. Uh, that's what it built my neck back. Yeah. Up. So you used it to to strengthen. For well, I was in traction for mm -hmm. a while, and then from that, I just okay. went right back to the bed. So. All right, uh, Joe. We got uh, a whole array of stuff here. Uh, you actually hang from the rafters by your teeth. I have. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, just start doing some stuff. You got here, what is this, a, 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 steel, a steel Like a piece of axle steel or something? This is uh, That's about a, what, half inch? Close to it. Close to a half an inch? You want, you want a drum roll with this, Joe? Okay, drum roll. Okay, a drum roll. Uh -huh. We have to send this back, so I'll just... Uh... <laughs> now, now does, is, is there any pain involved in that? No pain at all. Yeah, you have a little stuff on your face. <laughs> uh, now, that was right on your teeth? Right on my now, teeth. Now, do, do you have all your original teeth, or have they no, been tapped or bonded? I've or? had some that's been drilled, some been filled, and I have one tooth that's out. Okay, wow. All right, show us something else here, Joe. That's very impressive you know, that I, you can uh, do that. They said that she was going to hold the center block. I'll do anything you want for me, uh, from me. <laughs> for me? Whatever. Okay. All right, this block here, you'll... Okay, what does this weigh? This is about... Oh, I have no about idea. About 200 pounds? Yeah, it's about <laughs> 200 pounds. <laughs> yeah. I'll get, get, get it down a little lower, then I'll uh, come up with the sledgehammer, and then I'll come down. Is this about where you want it? Uh-huh. But then you... you. No, I back off, and back then... And then yeah. put, it, put it right in line. Okay. Nope. Yeah, how, how much does that sledgehammer weigh? Right, it weighs usually 22 and a half pounds, but I've took a two and a half pound weight off of it. Uh, What's it weigh now? Probably about 20 pounds. Okay. No, that's all right. I kind of have my hands full, Joe. <laughs> yeah, if this is good for you, this is fine for me. Are you all right? You want more room? You want to back away yeah, from there? Back let's pull distance. away from here. Okay. Okay. Now you're, you're going to get a going to get a reading here, right? Now that's just unbelievable. And again, no pain or anything? No pain. And what, what did you start on? Coffee tables and then just work <laughs> out? Have you ever met anybody else who does this kind of thing, Joe? Not, not all of the things that I do, I haven't. All right. Okay, we, we're running out of time here, so we want to make sure we get everything uh, right, so going. Go to the putter. Okay, the putter. Do what? Go, oh, we, we, Joe, we don't have time for the putter, but you have a whole set of golf clubs that you play golf with your, your teeth there. Okay, so you don't want the putter. Well, I, you, know, we, uh, you know, I personally want okay. the putter, but... <laughs> <laughs> The guy's gonna bite me, uh, but but we need to we're, we need to go right to here. Okay. Okay. And the mouthpiece is. Are on you a pretty big celebrity down there in uh, where you live in in, in Love uh, Valley? Mm, not that I know of. Okay. <laughs> Everybody knows me though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, what, what? <laughs> we're gonna have to get this. What do we have here, uh, Joe? That's a swing, and I guess you're gonna sit in it. Okay. Well, you want me to? Well. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna have to figure out how to get. Get in there. All right. How are we doing? Because we want to make sure we get to see this. Okay. And you're up there above me. Now, this is going to be nothing for you, this lift, will, will it? Because I, no, I no. weigh just like 180 or so. You should be all right. Okay. <laughs> do, you, do, you, uh, do you ever boil these things? <laughs> all right. I just get in. Let me know when you're ready. Now, is this Is this what you want me to do? Is this, is this about right? Can I have a seat? Mm -hmm. oh, no, wait, wait, Joe! <laughs> Why don't you pick me up by the shirt here? So a... All right, okay, let me get in there, Joe. Oh, geez, are you all right? Oh, now, you all right? get up a minute. You wait, you jumped in when I had my left feet here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Is it okay, Joe? Mm -hmm. Okay. You want any gum? Okay. Oh!